Okay. Uh, this story comes from Brucker, who is one of our listeners. He is from Nashville. Shouts out. Shout out in country. And uh, the story, uh, it's kind of funny because we met Brucker through a bunch of different podcasters on Reddit. And they created like this group on Instagram. So we've all been talking, listening to each other's podcasts. And he gave us this pretty detailed report on what he thinks about our podcast, as well as a story. So dope. Thank you, Brucker, for the story. His uh, podcast is Film on the Rocks. So they review a bunch of different films, all different types of genres. Uh, I did see that the two horror movies he had, maybe not horror. Well, one of them is Scream, so definitely horror. The other one was Shutter Island, which is like mm. dramatic Sus- drama, like suspense, thriller. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of good movies on there. Um, so very entertaining. This story comes from when he was in junior high, and he was watching I don't know the Discovery Channel. I feel like we've talked about this before, where they have those shows on Discovery Channel where it's like top ten. Diners, drive-ins, and dives in America. <laughs> water or like parks. water parks. And it's like the Schlitterbahn. <laughs> Whoa, dude, chill. <laughs> um, he was watching top 10 most haunted places in America, and one of them was in Tennessee, pretty oh. close to where he was, in a small one-stop sign town <laughs> called Rugby. Hmm. Somehow, what is junior high? Eighth grade? Seventh and eighth? Oh, uh, seven, yeah, seventh eighth? and eighth grade. Seventh and eighth grade? Yeah. Same as middle school then. Yes. So seventh, eighth grade, how old are you then? 13? 14. 14? Yeah. So as a 13 or 14-year-old, somehow he convinced his aunt to take him and some friends to visit this place. Aunt's a real one. Dude, what a badass <laughs> aunt, dude. <laughs> I know, for real. Uh, shout out aunts. The town, Rugby, Tennessee, was famous for what's called the Newbury House. Hmm. And Brucker added a website where I could read all the information on the Newbury House. So I was excited to to read through it. So I opened it. And the actual website looked like it was made (laughs) with like JavaScript in like 2001. There was like a huge (laughs) ad behind all the text. (laughs) So I couldn't close the ad, and it made all the words hard to read. So I don't know a ton of the history behind it, but the house itself is pretty haunted, apparently. It was on some show, so <laughs> for some reason, believe it. That makes me trust it more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's like, even your site's haunted, dog. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is his experience with staying at the Newbury house. So they turned it into a bed and breakfast. Dope. Which... I feel like is disrespectful to history. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the spirits are still so mad and angry. Um, but he, his two buddies, and his aunt drive down to rugby, and they have like a night or two there. They get to the house, and it's in the early afternoon. They walk in, they turn on the lights, and as soon as they turn the lights on, all like all the lights turn off immediately. So immediately he thinks this is going to be a good night. He's stoked, <laughs> which makes me think we should have him on the podcast. He's a at, sicko, bro. At some point, yeah. <laughs> Just like us. Um, they drop off their luggage. They try to figure out this electricity situation. Lights aren't turning back on. Real weird. So they're like, "Let's. we're hungry. Let's go grab a bite. Right across the street is a restaurant. And they get sat. Their waitress comes up trying to make small talk while they're placing their order. And the waitress says, so where are you guys visiting from? What you doing here? They're like, oh, we're actually from Nashville. And we're staying at the Newbury house. And the waitress's eyes go super wide. And she says, lock your doors. She runs to the back of the house or the kitchen or the restaurant. And out comes another waitress. And they don't see her again. So apparently she switched and didn't want to serve them anymore. Their meal goes fine. They finish up. They walk back across the street. As they're walking towards the house, the lights in the house are on. And they're like, cool, we have power again. They step inside the house. And once again, 
all the lights turn off immediately. So they're pretty suspicious at this point. They are trying to unpack their clothes. They're like, let's get out for a little bit. Uh, They do know that there's a graveyard in the same town that's tied to this house. And Brucker and his friends really want to go and visit. So the aunt drives them down to this graveyard. (laughs) And I feel bad for this aunt because it seems like she's just like on a leash this whole time doing whatever (laughs) they want to do. They get to the graveyard and they're all getting out of the car and the aunt is hesitant. She's like, I I think I'm going to stay here. So like, okay, whatever. (laughs) We're just going to go and explore for a little bit. So after they're just exploring by themselves, some time passes and their aunt is out of the car and is watching them while they're exploring. And at this point, they're already kind of far into the graveyard and they see their aunt and they're waving at her and she's standing there watching them and they, they beckon to her to, to come to them. At which she starts coming. And she's getting closer and they're like trying to talk to her. She's not responding. And there is a gravestone that she walks to and stops behind that gravestone. And in Brucker's words, their aunt vanished. Just disappeared into thin air. Like they're watching her and she just... They're watching her. And this comes from him. And his two friends that are with him. They, they're they all watching her walk towards them. Kind of strange because... She's not talking back She's to not them. talking back to them. She stops behind a tombstone? She stops behind the tombstone. And she just vanishes. So they walk up to the tombstone. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. I would probably do the same. Okay. <laughs> Thinking she's maybe hiding behind or something. Maybe like fell down real quick to like hide. <laughs> I see you. Pulled a DJ and rolled her ankle or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they get to the tombstone and to their astonishment, no ants were found. <laughs> it's not okay. Not okay. They look at the tombstone and some. you know how some tombstones have like more money in it. <laughs> 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 this particular one had an actual picture of the person. Oh. As it got as the person got closer, they thought it was their aunt because it had the same short hair, same body type. They could recognize that it was dark brown hair and it was the same kind of facial structure and hair in the picture on the tombstone. Ooh. And they Look back into the distance at the van, and their aunt is still sitting inside there. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Doesn't that suck that you still have to be poor when you're dead? <laughs> <laughs> like some people have a rock with like etches in it, and some people have like a castle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's scary about the aunt. <laughs> so they're pretty freaked out, obviously, at this point. So they run back to the car, and drives them back to the house. <laughs> They get to the house, <laughs> they flip the lights on, and, and? it stays on. <laughs> Luckily. <laughs> so, Brucker's blood is pumping at this point. To the point where he can't sleep. And he's, they're really out here, so they're trying to find more scary things. So what do they do? They go into the basement. <laughs> <laughs> Him and his friends. While his aunt is just like, I'm out, like, I'm <laughs> just going to bed. Um, they go into the basement. There's no lighting down there, so they have flashlights. Prepper, dude. Nice. <laughs> they have their flashlights. They're not finding anything too crazy. It's like dirt floors. Uh, they do find a wall that looks newer than the house that was put up towards the end of the basement when you go deeper. <laughs> and there is, like, a hole. Not a hole. Brucker sent pictures of this place. So he sent a picture of this wall and it looks like somebody knocked a part of it down from the top. So you can hop over the wall Uh. to the other side. And on the other side, there's more basement as well as a well. (laughs) 
Hmm. So he climbs over the wall, and they only have one flashlight, and he tells his friend, you shine the flashlight while I walk up to the well. So he's walking to the well, and there are some, there's like rocks and like brush covering part of the well. So he wants to move that out of the way so he can look inside. And as he reaches down to move these plants and these rocks out of the way, he feels and hears a slap on his hand to brush him away from touching the well. That point, he hightails it back to the wall, hops over, and they get out of the basement. Now, the last thing that happens in this house, (laughs) this just keeps going. Um, They decide they're done for the night. He's Under- reached his limit finally. I understand. The sicko. Go, go slaps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go slaps. No. <laughs> um, they go to their rooms. Well, I, I assume they stay in one room uh, they together. Better be. They better be. <laughs> Dude, do you remember when we would sleep over? Or I, I would sleep over at your guys' house because I wasn't roommates with you guys. But I, pract- I, I kind of was. <laughs> you were. <laughs> yeah. You just didn't pay rent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> uh, we would watch scary movies <laughs> and then right when the movie finished both of you would be like okay good night <laughs> <laughs> and just leave me and jordan in the living room jordan and i were the scared ones yeah. good luck good night. <laughs> and jordan good night. was like hey you want to just crash here in the living room dude i'm like real tired and comfortable <laughs> <laughs> let's just sleep here i was like yeah dude let's do that <laughs> uh that was brucker and his friends so uh they are in their room. They turn all the lights off. They wait a little bit to see if anything else happens, as if they didn't get enough. <laughs> Nothing happens. <sighs> so they finally lay down, and they close their eyes. As they are dozing off, for what he described as what felt like hours, they w- heard constant growling and scratching underneath them all on the sides of them and on the ceiling above them oh, nope not nope. wanting to go anywhere they s- stay glued lying on their backs <laughs> listening to all of this happen and it's coming from underneath them too everywhere in the house oh, all around them at one point you know how earlier i said this is a one stop sign town uh huh and this is also sometime in like the 2000s so they all have flip phones, and the pictures he sent were pretty like 240p quality, 144p <laughs> quality. Not the best, but uh, reception wasn't great back then. So in a small town like this, they didn't have reception the whole time they were there. So while this growling and scratching is happening in this house that they're trying to go to bed in, his phone starts ringing. When previously he couldn't make phones phone calls during the day. So he's just letting his phone ring. He's just letting the growls growl (laughs) (laughs) and whatever scratch. And they're just laying there terrified. Like I said, he feels like this is going on for hours. They can't go to bed, which makes perfect sense. Yeah. After some time, all of the noises at one time immediately stopped. And silence filled the room, which is like a weird thing to think about, silence filling the room. It's like, But after going through that for hours and they don't hear anything, somehow that scares them even more. Until they were able to fall asleep. <sighs> to which they wake up and they pack up and then they leave. But that was the story of Brucker at the Newbury House in Rugby, Tennessee. Dude, that's scary. I probably would have stayed another night, though. <laughs> <laughs> what did we learn? Um, I think, I don't know, it's super relatable because as growing up, I loved like ghost hunting, going to haunted places. And there was only a couple times to where it turned from being like the most fun thing in the world to like not. <laughs> And I think we all kind of know that feeling of like when it stops being fun and all of a sudden you're like, oh no. (laughs) 
Uh, it kind. I'm not like trying to victim blame or anything, but like he was axing for it. <laughs> they were kind of axing for it, dude. <laughs> Dude, I think the noises at night were the ant getting back at them. Uh, <laughs> it's like, and your little shits. <laughs> <laughs> Just scritching on the floor and stuff. It, it was her in the graveyard, too. Oh. <laughs> she was real. She fell backwards and then crawled. Away. <laughs> 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 like, uh, auntie. <laughs> Slithers into her little ex or something. <laughs> her RAV4. <laughs> Dude, uh, shout out Brucker. Thank you. Yeah. So I just looked up the rugby hotel. Dude, that's what I want to do next episode. Is go there? Yeah, go there <laughs> next episode. Let's no. do it. <laughs> Record in the Newberry house. <laughs> Funny of you to assume that I would have money to go there. <laughs> um, no, uh, study up on it and talk about the actual history next episode. Okay, then never mind. <laughs> Share a little snippet, though. Just the first thing that comes up is a um, trip advisor. Ooh, recommendation? What does it say? Or a review? Five out of five ghosties. <laughs> okay, so yeah, trip <laughs> advisor. <laughs> and just the title is It Is Haunted. Is this is somebody's in all review. Caps. <laughs> yeah. It says it is haunted. They yelled is. And, then, th- and then three out of five stars. <laughs> <laughs> so it's haunted, but it's aight. <laughs> So they said, I specifically asked before um, booking this place if it was haunted. He laughed and said he hasn't heard anything since he has worked there. Dude, I cannot read sideways. (laughs) Okay. After a night of hearing things all around us and having a disturbing experience, like electricity shooting through my whole body, we decided not to stay a second night. When we turned our keys into the nice lady working at the visitor center... She proceeded to tell us as many story or many stories of paranormal activity. <laughs> so it was like after they were leaving, that's when they that's when they actually told them. Um, the area is beautiful, blah blah blah. Anyway, so yeah, mad people are having experiences there. That first dude was a liar. I know he's like, so what? I don't, I don't what are you know, talking dude. about? <laughs> Nothing's haunted. Anyway, that here. credit card number. <laughs> <laughs> that's wild. Yeah, I'm going to look into that a little bit more because the story was a little last minute because we just got it. A little bit of that history. Read it, wanted to share it, didn't have time to go through the actual history, mm. but I'll look through it. Nice, nice. Bro, when you said 